While Islamic State is destroying antiquities in Syria, the militant group is also shipping them to buyers in Europe and the US. They have value for these organizations. They employ locals to loot antiquities, use artifacts to barter for weapons and bribe officials. That material can be used as criminal capital between different criminal organizations. Employ a network of dealers in the Middle East and beyond. There are uh, so many customers from Germany, from uh, London, from USA. And take a cut of the profits. Based on Islamic State documents and interviews with traffickers and law enforcement officials, the Wall Street Journal can reveal a pattern of plunder that takes priceless antiquities from the battlegrounds of Syria and Iraq to the art traders of the West. Before the Civil War, the ancient city of Palmyra in Syria was a tourist hub. But according to Western enforcement and intelligence officials, the UNESCO World Heritage Site has become a looting ground for the radical Islamic State group, or ISIS. Ancient cities such as Roman-era Dura Europa in eastern Syria have almost been completely looted. The Islamic State has been heavily involved in using metal detectors to look for metal objects coins, religious paraphernalia from the Byzantine period, for example. Sites like Dura Europus or uh, Tel Salahia in the area of, of Dura. Satellite imagery shows the extent of the digging. Here, each dark dot is an excavation pit. According to Western security officials, the looting generates up to $88 million a year in revenue for ISIS. The question of what antiquities is worth, they have value for these organizations. An example would be a particular extremist organization needs to get people across a border. They could use antiquities to secure that service from, from people, accomplices working on the other side of the border in Customs and Border Protection, for example, in the conflict zone. They could be used as bribes in, in that case. They could be used to trade for weapons. Antiquities buried in the ground for thousands of years are dug up by locals working under the supervision of ISIS. Permits are issued by Islamic State's Antiquities Division, headed by Abu Laif al daidi ISIS calls upon a network of experts to verify items and establish their value. They charge traders a 20% tax on all fines that they sell. The antiquities are then moved out of ISIS-controlled regions and sold to middlemen in countries like Turkey and Lebanon. You can see uh, so many antiques in uh, this area because so near of border. Middlemen like Mohammed Al Ali, an antiquities dealer from Syria who has fled the country. There are uh, so many people uh, working in this sale, uh, selling antiques, and there are a network together all this network working here uh, to sell it this uh, antiques will know uh, there are some antiques will coming uh, soon from ISIS Al Ali says Islamic State's Abu Layth al Dari contacted him asking him to find a western buyer for this Roman era golden ring Al Ali says the ring was sold but by another middleman not him our sense is, especially for Lebanon and Turkey, that these are established middlemen that were operating before the conflict. They have the information that's necessary to move these antiquities onto the market, and they have the information that's necessary to launder those antiquities into the legal or illicit market. Middlemen can command a higher price for their goods in Europe, America, or Asia than they can in Middle Eastern countries. In Turkey, there are uh, so many customers, but uh, deal with people from Germany, from uh, uh, London, uh, from uh, uh, French, uh, from uh, Switzerland, from USA. There are uh, so many customers coming here. The antiquities have to be smuggled out of the Middle East and into Western markets. This Bible, filmed by Mr. Al Ali, was excavated from a third century church at the Dura Europus archaeological site and then smuggled to Gaziantep in Turkey. 
Mr. Al Ali says a buyer paid 10,000 euros, approximately $11,000, to have it then smuggled from Turkey into Russia, hidden in a car full of vegetables. He says there's one way to ensure goods get across borders. Pay money, pay more, more money, a lot of money to across. I know uh, sometimes my friends uh, pay near $5,000 for some antiques to cross border but we'll be sure we'll sell it by $10,000 or $50,000. The antiquities tend to follow an established route, from Syria through Turkey or Lebanon into Western Europe and the US, according to French and Bulgarian officials. Really all it requires is a digital camera or a cell phone camera and a Facebook site or some other social media site where you can make the photographs of antiquities available, the photographs circulate, in the West, let's say, someone picks out what they want, and then on the other end, where the antiquities are hidden near or in the conflict zone, they're popped into a shipping envelope and then they're, they're sent on to, to the buyer. Once an art dealer has the antiquity, they then try to launder their origin. To do this, Swiss officials say dealers hide the goods in free ports. Set up by private companies, Freeports are rentable spaces that are given tax-free status by the state, much like the duty-free section in an airport. Items stored in freeports only pay tax once they leave the freeport system and thus generate traceable paperwork. There's some suspicion. I know that some of this material may be entering the freeport system, the global freeport system, where it can lie in relative secrecy for a long period of time in a tax-free environment, and then it will be trickled out onto the market to avert suspicion. According to Western security officials, artifacts are moved from warehouse to warehouse, often being stored for years on end. The time allows for the item's true history to be blurred and for a new one to be fabricated. French officials say documents are forged using old typewriters. Swiss authorities say they are now clamping down on the free ports but that some artefacts have been in the system for so long, it is almost impossible to trace their true origin. We have fairly reliable information as on the locations where some of this material is being cached, and it will be eventually shipped on a year, two, three, ten years from now. The, the market today, in most cases, is exercising due diligence and is aware of the fact that there are a lot of antiquities from Syria and Iraq that are out there. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement is investigating a number of U.S.-based antiquities dealers that they suspect may be handling looted Syrian and Iraqi objects, according to people familiar with the probes. Swiss and French authorities say they are conducting similar investigations across Europe. Mr. Dante believes that buying these antiquities poses a greater risk than just funding Islamic State. What we're seeing is a, is a is a cultural heritage crisis, a cultural crisis, the likes of which we have not seen really, to my mind, since the Second World War. Mr. Al Ali says he is aware of what his trade is doing to his country, but that doesn't stop him. I know we are destroying our area uh, by search, by uh, everything, but uh, now uh, because the war, the poor people, uh, the old trying and uh, searching about antiques to sell it, to getting some money to stay alive.